In today's video, you will learn how to set up a new bundle condition by means of Swipe for Form and Coral VBC extension. For this purpose, we consider a wavy mesh movement, which is a bundle condition depends on the position in the X direction, and also it is a time dependent bundle condition. The test case that we consider here to impose the new bundle condition is the cavity test case. Since it is a very simple test case and we can easily implement the new bundle condition on the, for example, the top wall of the cavity. Since we have a dynamic mesh motion, uh, we have to define the dynamic mesh dict in the constant trajectory. If I open the dynamic mesh dict, here we define it the solver and the library that we are gonna to use them. Uh, we use a displacement Laplacian solver, that means we solve a Laplacian equation for the movement of the point in the computational domain. In this method, we have to introduce the displacement of the boundary in the zero directory by defining two new variables. The first is the cell displacement, which is a volume vector field, and the second is a point vector field with the name of point displacement. When we define the displacement on each boundary, uh, we can solve a Laplacian equation for the displacement of the point and um, calculate the new position of each point in the computational grid. In this simulation, we're going to use a uniform model for the diffusivity in the Laplace equation, but you can also easily change the diffusive model to the quadratic inverse distance method. Uh, but here, I decided to use easiest method, which is uniform model. Okay, I back to zero directory and here you can find a cell displacement and also point displacement. I open the cell displacement and when we look at there, we can find the boundary field and also the internal field. For the internal field, we set the zero for the initial condition and also it has the dimension of uh, meter as we define it here and as it is also obvious, it is a volume vector field and defined it in the three direction x y and z okay for the wall we consider a fixed value for the cell displacement and uh, for the front and back we use the empty for the 2d simulation and for the moving wall as i mentioned in the first of this video we're gonna to implement a new boundary condition and consider a wavy mesh motion for the moving wall then we focus on the this part of the boundary condition for the cell displacement the implementation of wavy mesh motion can be split into two parts. In the first part, we just generate a wavy mesh on the boundary condition with the name of the moving wall. And in the second part, we also impose the movement of this wave on the corresponding boundary condition. In the first part of this implementation, we're going to implement this function, the y as a function of the x. It includes a is the wave magnitude and a sinus uh, function, which include also the kk is the 2 pi uh, and l is the wavelength. Okay, uh, for this, as you see also here, first of all, we have to say what is the type of the boundary condition, which is here fixed value, but for our case, we say or we have a groovy VC boundary condition. And then we also introduce the value. Value is a, an initial value for the Garo VBC. It doesn't use this value, and, but it is needed for the Garo VBC uh, boundary condition. And the most important part of this implementation is the variable. We define it three variables by this header. The L equal to this value, two centimeter and A is equal to the 4 millimeter, and also ka, uh, calculated according to the pi and also L. Here is the variable, here is the type of the boundary condition and initial value. And now we can also define the value expression for the Gro VBC. As you see here, we, we say we have a vector for the moving wall boundary condition. The first component is equal to the zero in the x, but for the y, the movement of and displacement in the y direction, we have uh, this function. As you see, it is it is very easy implemented here. A sinus k and for the access to the x, we use 
this function pause and uh, that x by using this one we access to the x and if you change to the y you have uh, access to the y coordinate this value expression equal to this function and now uh, we set the cell displacement we can also open the point displacement here also you can see the same boundary condition but for the point vector field for the moving wall again i say we have a global vc boundary condition and also the value set to the zero in uh, all of the direction and for the expression the value expression for the point displacement is easier than cell displacement we define the function on the cell displacement here we say we use the same function as we define it in the cell displacement but since we have a point vector field we use two point it means we have the same function but for the points okay if you have uh, a volume vector field and you want and you're gonna to use the same function for the face you can say two face but here since we have point we say two point and use the same function as we define it in the cell displacement here okay the final thing that you have to consider and implement here is taking the control dict in the control dict uh, i load the open form and also lib uh, google vbc uh, when i load the google vbc library we can uh, use the google vbc boundary condition it is essential and don't forget to define it in the control dict now i open my terminal and i load from extend version 4.1 since uh, it is compatible with the swipe work from anchor vbc extension i use from extend in this tutorial and the latest version is the 4.1 when i uh, record this video uh, first i generate the mesh by block mesh and now to move the mesh i use move dynamic move dynamic dynamic mesh when i use this utility it moves to just the mesh and don't solve any equation for the u or pressure or something else i use powerful when we start the simulation we have a flat ball here but when i go to the next time step uh, as we define it and introduce in the cell displacement we have a wave on this ball as you see here and if i continue the simulation it doesn't change since uh, the wave here is just a function of the position but in the second part of this uh, tutorial you can see the movement of this wave since uh, in the second part it is also a time dependent on the condition i again copy the cavity test case and here i open again the cell displacement but here uh, i clear the moving wall boundary condition to set up a new boundary condition as function of the position and also the time I consider and decided to implement this function for the y as a function of the x and t it is similar to the previous test case r sinus um, ka x but here we have minus u the velocity of the wave uh, manipulated to the time um, and now we introduce the time in the value expression for the moving wall boundary condition again the type of this boundary condition is go over vc the value of the moving wall is uniform equal to the zero and the variable are defined it here as well as we define it in the previous test case we define it l a and k here uh, but uh, now we needed to define the velocity of the wave and we define it here and it is equal to the y u w x in the x direction okay and the most important part of this boundary condition is the value expression and here you can see the expression for this function it includes uh, a zero component in the x and also in the z direction but for the y we have this function r sinus a ka pose dot x ka x as i explained in the previous part and minus u manipulated to the, the time and by this command we access to the time the physical time physical time of the fluid okay it is equal to this function for the moving wall and open my terminal again here i generate the mesh and we use again the move dynamic mesh utility 
I use Paragon to visualize the data. I save it a Paraview as state to show you a more beautiful um, this wave motion. And now I start the simulation. As you see here, we have a flat, but we generate a mesh on this one and also it goes to the end and again it started. I think the easiest way to introduce a new boundary condition is using Swipe for from Ankara VBC extension. In the next tutorial, I try to provide a video about further complicated boundary condition and using a VBC and maybe Swipe for from function object to pass for access the data. At the end, I would like to say if you enjoy from this video, please don't forget to subscribe our channel in the YouTube. To access to the source code of this tutorial, you can come and visit the Hyperlisium website in the open form section. You can find free tutorial that provided by myself. I hope that this tutorial can help you to simulate your own physics in the open form safety package. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me and until the next video, goodbye.